Already, musicians have had plenty of words exchanged with politicians on the campaign trail about using their music. But what are the laws exactly when it comes to politicians using music? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Craig of the royalty-free music website, DoNorthAudio.com, and this is Royalty Free Review. Popular music is an extremely important part of the campaign trail, ever since John F. Kennedy used Frank Sinatra's High Hopes, who actually sang a new version of the song to incorporate JFK and his family members. Since then, not all musicians have been as responsive to the use of their music as Sinatra was to John F. Kennedy. The complaints from musicians about politicians using their music has already started to pile up this year, and there's more than a year to go until the elections. Mike Huckabee and Kim Davis used Survivor's Eye of the Tiger. Donald Trump used R.E.M.'s End of the World as We Know It, and Neil Young's Rockin' in the Free World. Ted Cruz also used R.E.M.'s End of the World as We Know It, and Scott Walker used Dropkick Murphys. I'm shipping up to Boston. Every election, you can be sure to see one or more musicians exchanging words with politicians, asking them to stop using their music. Few of these cases ever go past a cease and desist letter, though, since copyright law is sort of unclear about the use of music on the campaign trail. But usually, when an artist asks a politician to stop using their music, they usually do, probably so they don't get more negative attention. Still, there are some things very clear with the copyright law, so here's when it's legal to use music on the campaign trail and when it's not. When it's legal, many large venues like banquet halls and stadiums purchase blanket licenses that give them the permission to play almost any popular song that there is. This is how it's legal for candidates to play whatever music that they wish without permission from the artist. It's also legal if a politician receives permission to use the music from the musician and purchases a license as well. When it's not legal, if the song is played in a venue that doesn't have a blanket license or in public, this would be considered copyright infringement. Mike Huckabee and Kim Davis played Survivor's Eye of the Tiger in public, but uh, lucky for them, Survivor is not following up with a lawsuit at this time. It's also not legal if a candidate makes something a theme song to play at multiple events on a regular basis without permission from the artist. Music will continue to play a huge role in future campaigns, but it looks like some politicians may be taking steps to avoid these issues in the future, but really the only way to completely avoid the issue is to make sure that the politician has permission to use the music from the artist and their publishing company. Or they could use royalty-free music. Thanks for watching Royalty Free Review. I'll see you next time.